What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please go ahead and do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. Okay, so in today's video, I thought we would take a look at my basic mixing workflow that I use when I'm working in Studio One. So first and foremost, let's open up a finder window. What I usually ask for, whether it's an artist or a producer or um, wh whoever it is that's giving me the files that I'm working with. I ask for a main folder, and I usually ask for something like a readme file of some sort. Obviously, I ask for the audio files. This could either be stems or mono regions. And then in addition to that, I also like them to generate a MIDI file, which is just basically a MIDI region from their DAW of choice. Now, the reason I do this is because if they've gone through the process of creating their markers and they have detailed markers with custom names and stuff like that, instead of me recreating that, I like to have access to that. So this is what I will ask them to do. So I've already created my song and I've opened up the README, which has given me some basic information. So I know that my tempo is 148. In this case, this is for a song that needs to be stemmed out. So it also gives me my structure in terms of how many subgroups or how many stems I'm going to need. But essentially, regardless of whether I need to deliver a stereo mix or uh, I need to deliver stems, the process is the same. Okay, so from here, I've gone ahead and I've changed my tempo to match the song. I'm going to drag in these audio events into my timeline. And then the first thing I do is do a save and I make sure I copy these into the song folder so that if the files get removed from Dropbox or deleted that I'm not without my files. All right. So now that this is done, the very first thing that I do is I have a basic uh, LUFS meters, a, a, an effects chain that I like to load for my main outs because my first step when I'm working on a mix is I will gain stage this. And then I also like to customize my view a little bit to make things work for myself. So. I'm going to do a couple things really quickly here. I'm going to open up my inspector and I like to have my information visible a certain way. I want to see everything up into the gain here. And then in this case, I'm not using the chord track in any of these cases. So I like to just move this up to about here. This gives me quite a lot of resolution here in terms of being able to see the inspector if I need to see this. All right, next thing I do is I just resize my browser so that I'm maximizing my screen real estate. And last but not least, let's set all of our inputs to none. Okay, so from here, essentially the next thing I wanna do is I wanna get the markers in place from their MIDI files. So in order to do this, I'm going to save this and then let's open up our finder window again. And actually we can go to our start page. We'll open up our finder window and I'm gonna grab this MIDI file. Now you can see that I've already done this. I did this in May, but we're using the same song. So let's drag this MIDI file over here. And then I'm gonna say, do you want to load general MIDI sounds? I'm just gonna say no. This is gonna create a brand new song and it's gonna create this in 44.1. Now, as soon as this is opened, if I was to open up the marker track and we were to zoom out a little bit, you can see that any markers that were created by this actual, the DAW session from the person that I'm getting it from, these markers are, are, are set up over here, but you have to actually drag the MIDI file in to do this. I'm just gonna change my sample rate to 48 so that everything matches. Click apply and okay. Now I'm gonna save this. And what this will do is this will save this in the actual folder, wherever the MIDI file was. All right, so now that that's done, this is saved. I'm just gonna close this song and then we have, we're back to this song. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna do import song data and I just need to navigate to that same folder. So it is stems for mixing and it is gravitate. And then it was in the resources folder and we'll just grab this. This is a new song that I've just created now. And now what I want from here is I want the tempo and time signature and the marker track. Cause essentially what this will do now is this will bring everything over. Now I'm gonna select one of the events and I can make my markers visible. If I select one of these events and I do option Y, it sets my start and end marker to be the exact duration. So now I have all of the markers that were created from the composer. So now if I wanted to move to the different markers, these are all the different sections of this song. In this particular case, this is a cue. And in this particular case, this is also has different versions of, of the cue. So there's a stings, there's 30 second versions, 60 second versions, etc., cetera, et cetera. Now, the next thing that I like to do, and this is especially useful if I'm producing something and I wanna take something further from where what I'm given, I like to have a ranger section. So one cool thing that we can do is, I'm just gonna move this out of the way for a second. And Studio One automatically creates a start and end marker. So what I usually would have to do is I could, for example, right click, copy this, wanna use this name. And then on this one, I just wanna paste 
that same name in. So I have the exact markers set up the way I want. If I right click on any one of these markers, I can create a ranger sections. And then of course, if I wanted to color these, if I wanted to give them a custom color so that I break things up a little bit, that's something I can do easily over here. So we'll go through, maybe we'll give some of these, I don't know, we'll make this one green. This one we can make, we'll make this another purple color. Uh, this one we'll go with orange. And lastly, we'll choose, uh, we'll choose this dark blue. Uh, and this is something that can also be done in the arranger section over here. If you need to, you can access the colors there. So now I have this kind of visually broken up. I have an arranger track. I have a marker track. The marker track came from the actual session. Now I'm essentially ready to start gain staging. Now my gain staging process has changed a little bit from version 4.1.4 to 4.5. What I would usually do is select the audio events and then I would use this and I would gain stage up or down and I would try to get these all kind of so that, you know, they're not too big and in terms of they're not too loud, but also that they're visible and I can see things. But one of the things that we have that majorly changed the way that I'm working now is we have the ability to see our trim and our, and our polarity invert switches, and that's on the input controls. So sometimes what I will do, if something is barely visible, instead of always having to grab this data zoom to zoom things up, sometimes what I'll do is I'll, I will grab the event gain and I will just gain stage these so that they're all visible so that I can make out the, the detail of the waveforms, like in this case over here. I might gain stage these all up just so I can see what's on here and I can see it evenly. And then when it comes time to actual gain staging, when I'm setting up my static mix, then what I would actually do is, is grab the input trims over here and I would set things up using the input trims. And this is something that I could honestly do pre fader. I don't even have to see anything. I could turn this all the way down. And I could see, okay, well, where are my levels hitting here? Okay, well, maybe I say like, I don't want to go any higher than minus 12 on things. I could just start peeling these down a little bit. And then I'm giving myself enough headroom to make sure that I'm not going to be clipping my main outs or anything like that. So this one I could bring down over here. So just gain staging using the actual trim controls. Let's find a spot where this one is playing. Maybe somewhere about there. And I don't even have to see anything. Let's just say that I want to say, okay, I want everything to hit around the minus 12 mark. Now, when that's done, I can hide my input controls. And now I can actually start gain staging the song. And this is something that I would start building the static as well. Let's just pull these out a little bit so we can see what's what. I would start to organize by color and have a certain order that I like things to be in. So, for example, I want my always want my kick and then I want my snare put our toms here. I'm looking for my hats after my snare and then I want my bass. Okay. We got cymbals. We'll stick that with here with, with, with the drums. And then I've got bass, lead guitar, rhythm guitar one and rhythm guitar two. Okay. So I'm going to say to myself, okay, I'm going to choose a color for my drums. In this case, I could go with a brown, my bass, I'll leave blue, my lead guitar. I could leave this color. And then maybe these two, I want to have another color altogether. So now I've set up some color coding to differentiate the different actual kind of groups, if you will, but I haven't actually created any groups yet. Now at this point, I would start to build my mix. And this is pretty simple. I would just pull everything down. And I'm going to open up this little flap here. The view meter here, I usually start my gain staging at an 18 scale, and I aim to have everything hit zero. So if we start bringing this up one by one. Okay, there's our kick. I need to find a section where the toms are playing. Okay, and then I want my bass. Bring it back to the beginning. We have a guitar. This guitar is coming in here. Okay, now everything is set up here. What I would probably do is add a VCA so that I could offset the whole mix and get it in the sweet spot where I need it. Okay. 
Okay, so that's working. Now, the minute that's good, I could just merge this VCA automation, and then I no longer need this. I could remove it, and then I could just set these all to off. So now I have my whole mix set up. My static mix is set up, and at this point, I could be ready to either start creating buses and, and mixing this as, as I want to, or another thing that I could do is I could import from my actual mixing template, and I could start working that way. So that's another thing that I could do is I could use my import song data, and in this case, I've got a mix template that I can use, and I could open this one up, and we could just hop in here, and then I could start choosing anything I want. So I've got a bunch of subgroups set up, I've got a bunch of folder tracks, uh, VCAs, I've got a mix bus. So for now, let's just import the mix bus from my mix template. And this will have a basic set of plugins that I like to use on my mix bus, for example. And then I could just route everything here to the mix bus. And then we could start our mix, right? And this is the basic workflow I use. And regardless of whether I'm getting tracks that are meant to be a two mix, that's gonna be for pop or Latin or folk or anything like that or rock, or if I'm mixing a score that I need to actually stem out and have all, a bunch of subgroups and a complicated routing system, the process doesn't really change. I'm, I'm, I'm color coding, I'm creating markers, I'm creating arranged tracks, and I'm doing some basic gain staging to get me started. And at this point, I would just go ahead and start mixing this track. So that is my basic workflow when I'm mixing. And another thing that I like to do is I like to break up the concept of setting up a mix and the actual mixing. So let's say that I'm working on uh, an EP or a record. If I have maybe three or four songs that are sent to me, I might go ahead and set up all of the sessions for all of these tracks, get a very basic static mix going, get some color coding in place, um, have some effects chains lined up that I want to bring in, Do use my import song data from my mixing template so that I have some effects returns in place. And then the idea is that when I'm actually mixing, that I just want to be mixing. I don't want to have to do anything. So essentially, I'm kind of acting like my own assistant, preparing these tracks ahead of time so that I'm ready to go. But this is just the way that I do it. I find it's useful to have markers and arrangement tracks. And the other thing is, let's say that this was a full song or a full arrangement. Another thing that I could do is I could grab this blade tool and I could you know, make some adjustments to some of these arranged tracks. And maybe I wanna have these split up if I'm doing additional production. And then what this allows me to do is I've got shortcuts that allow me to go to, for example, the previous and next markers. But I also have shortcuts, and Studio One has shortcuts that allows you to go to the previous to next session uh, sections, rather, arranger sections. So these can be accessed either through using shortcuts in Studio One or on a fader port, for example. So this is the way that I like to do things. Um, anyways, I hope that this has been useful. Uh, if you did enjoy this, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I will do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.